North West Hills. Is it luxurious or vanilla? Are the properties beautiful or kind of fugly? Does it have good value for money or bad value for money? And the answer is yes to all of it, kind of. Northwest Hills is one of the most desired suburban neighborhoods in Austin for a good reason. It's close to downtown, it's close to South and North Austin, and you can still get a large parcel of land without going completely bankrupt. What's the catch? As we all know, great location comes with a price tag. So in order to help you make an informed decision, I'm going to rank Northwest Hills based on three criteria, convenience, surroundings, and real estate. Stay tuned and let's see how it stacks against the competition. Northwest Hills, located in 78731 zip code, is landlocked between the following roads, Spicewood Road, 2222, Mopac, and the 360. It's called Northwest Hills because when it was originally built, it was Northwest Austin, but today it's kind of centralized. Established around the 50s, and originally it was kind of disconnected from downtown, but once they built Mopac at 66, everything got so much closer. With good roads comes great commutability. Due to the Jewish community center, Northwest Hills is very popular with the Jewish community and it has something called a roof. For those of you who are not familiar with it, a roof is where the Orthodox Jews can stay within the Shabbat. So it has some sort of an extra land lockability, at least for now, for the Jewish community. All right, so with all of that out of the way, let's start ranking it. We're going to start with convenience and specifically lifestyle. While there are several restaurants in Northwest Hills, it's, it's not great. You have a couple of burger joints and a cafe. It doesn't overflow with stuff like Allendale and Crestview. But that said, it's so close to downtown and the domain that you can kind of commute to everywhere that you want. It's within 10 to 15 minutes of a drive. We're going to put a list of inside the neighborhood and outside the neighborhood restaurants. You have several shopping and recreation centers within proximity to the neighborhood, like Mesa Woods, uh, Northwest Hills Village, and Far West Retail Center. But the larger ones are outside of the neighborhood, the Arboretum, uh, Northwood Plaza, and of course, the domain. You do have HEB and Randalls within Northwest Hills, but if you go 10 minutes out of it, you're going to get Trader Joe's and Costco and Sabbath Club and basically everything that you need. So all in all, I'm going to give it a four out of six. Moving on to transportation. So with regards to public transportation, that again, Austin is not the greatest, but you do have the line 30 with the bus that's going to take you all the way to downtown. And other than that, you are so close to Mopac, so you can get to downtown or to the domain, with relative ease. So accounting for that, I'm going to give transportation a five out of six. From a commuting perspective, we're talking about 10 to 15 minutes away from downtown and the domain. And with the traffic, we're talking about 15 to 25 minutes. So it's very, very commutable. And one of the best thing about this neighborhood is that you can get a larger home while still keeping your commute relatively short. Regardless of whether you're going north or south, you're going to have a decent time commuting. While you are close to the main hubs, it's not walking distance still, so I'm going to give it a five out of six. Moving on to surroundings, starting with schools. Of course, education is key. And in Northwest Hills, you're going to be assigned to DOS Elementary School based on my client's reviews and also based on the public reviews, it scores relatively high, seven out of 10 in grade schools. And then you're also associated with Murchison Middle School and with Anderson High School. And per grade school, they're not ranked that high, five and six out of 10. That is rather surprising given the prestigious nature of this neighborhood. But with that out of the way, you have an abundance of private schools. One of them is the AJA, the Austin Jewish Academy. From 18 months, it's located within the JCC compound, and this compound is plush. You also have Magellan, Kastner, and Paragon. If you are into Montessori, you have a Montessori school between 18 to 8th grade as well. So although it's good to have several private schools, I do prioritize public school as much as I can because I think that you want to be cost-effective, typically speaking. And the public schools, they're decent, they're not the greatest. I'm going to give it a four out of six. Moving on to parks and greenery. And on the one hand, the neighborhood is beautiful. You have a lot of mature trees. You're close to Mount Bonnell. You have some trails, you have some views, and all of that is nice. But then the amenities are relatively older. So for families, you don't get the nicest amenities compared to other luxurious neighborhoods. And yeah, being close to Mount Bonnell and Allen Park and Brightleaf is great, but we want more amenities in this type of neighborhood. So all in all, I'm going to give it a four out of six. Moving on to community and crime. And from the community perspective, it does have the largest Jewish community in Austin. And if we're talking solely about Jewish people, I think that it's probably scored like five 
maybe even six out of six, I'm not sure. The JCC compound is extremely nice and everybody can be a member. You don't need to be Jewish, you know, to be a part of the JCC. You have gyms and pools and it's really, really great. But then outside of the JCC, it's a bit lacking. And when we look at the crime map, it is not as green as some of the other suburban neighborhoods that we had seen. So all in all, I'm going to give it a four out of six. Moving on to real estate, starting with affordability. And Northwest Hills is very, very special in the real estate department. Most of the houses are mid-century or mid-century modern. Most of them were built in the 50s to the 70s, but recently more and more developers are coming in and leveling the house and building a new one instead or remodeling the house from the ground up. In order to get into the neighborhood, you need to prepare to dish out at the very least 900 to a million bucks. Typically speaking, you can get it lower, but then you will need to put a lot of effort into it or live in a very old uh, home. Once you get to the 1.5 to $2 million, now you start to get properties that are a bit more luxurious in nature, but you know, it's not super cheap, at least not in Austin. The average price per square feet is 445 per this month. We're talking about March, 2024. So from an affordability factor, I am going to give it a two out of six. With the affordability out of the way, we're going to move into scarcity and everything else in real estate, and it's going to get higher now. Because from a scarcity perspective, the land is very scarce in Northwest Hills. You don't have any land reserves. It's very hilly, and you don't have any like huge ranches that you can go in and sweep. And the fact it's so landlocked gives a lot of value to the land itself. One of my clients purchased several properties for over a million dollars and then tore them down, million bucks just for the land. And because it's landlocked, because it's very well positioned, the demand is very, very strong and the value increases over time. So I have to give it a five out of six for scarcity. From a density perspective, it's also performing relatively well because most of the lots are larger in size. Compared to Allendale and Crestview, when developers are coming and building several properties on a single lot, that's not really the style in Northwest Hills. You have larger homes, expect yards between 0.2 to 0.3 acres at least, and the properties are going to be sized 2,000 to 5,000 square feet in size. So from a density perspective, I'm going to give it a five out of six. Character is probably the most objective thing I have in this list. Based on feedback I got with many, many clients of mine, almost all of them love the character of the neighborhood, the mature trees, the spaced out roads, the houses that are the complete opposite of little boxes. Each of them look a bit different, especially with all of the development that is going on. The neighborhood is overflowing with character. Now, I must admit that personally, I don't really appreciate all the properties that have such a low ceiling that I can basically raise my hand and touch the ceiling, but I do like the character of the neighborhood. And of course, I love all the properties that have been renovated and became very luxurious in nature. And those of you who follow me know that I absolutely love trees and the big, thick oaks that you have all over Northwest Hills are bringing a lot of greenery into the neighborhood. So all in all, I'm going to give it a five out of six for character. The one thing I want to point out is that a lot of these neighborhoods don't have sidewalks. So look into that. If you like strolling around with your baby or with your canine, just make sure that you are aware that some of these neighborhoods don't really have sidewalks and you're going to walk on the road. The other thing to be aware of is that it's very hilly, Northwest Hills. All right, so let's look at Northwest Hills from all of the perspective. From the convenience score, we got 14 out of 18, and that's doing very well. From the surrounding score, not the greatest, 12 out of 18. And then from the real estate score, the affordability took it down, but then all of the other parameters are relatively high. So if your budget is larger, weight it out appropriately. I'm going to put a comparison between Northwest Hills and other neighborhoods. When we take Northwest Hills and we compare it to other urbanic suburbs and luxurious suburbs, we see it's ranked relatively okay in the convenience department. If we look at the comparisons, we're going to see uh, Crestview, Mueller, Zilker, Hyde Park. All of these areas are significantly smaller in size from a property perspective. So if you're trying to get the most amount of house 
and most amount of convenience, I think Northwest Hills ranks relatively high. But then it does fall short on the surroundings. It doesn't have a lot of features. The schools aren't the best. It doesn't perform as well. Unless you're in the Israeli or Jewish community and you really care about the AJA, and then it takes it up a notch. And then in the real estate department, it performs very well. Other than not being super affordable, it ranks very high in all the other segments. Now, I know that the scores can be a bit tricky because a lot of these neighborhoods are ranked relatively clustered together, 43, 44, but remember that not all scores are created equal. Some are more trending towards convenience, towards real estate, towards surrounding. The whole point is for you to review it and know what is the best for you. One of the things that I find hard to optimize on is affordability. In my scoring system, it only gets six points out of the entire 60, but to my experience, affordability means a lot to many people and you need to wait it out and understand how much does it mean to you. I think that if you have the budget, you want a larger home and you want to prioritize convenience, Northwest Hills is one of the most desirable neighborhoods in Austin. That said, if you want a larger home, but the convenience factor isn't as important, you can get a lot more house for your buck if you go a bit north or even south or west. That's it for today. Let me know what you think of Northwest Hills and what you think about the ranking system and what are the next neighborhoods that I should rank. If you're considering moving to Austin or investing here, reach out to me. I would love to sit with you, understand your individual preferences and help guide you through the process so you can aim towards the right neighborhoods for you. I don't think that all neighborhoods are created equal and I definitely don't think that all people and families are created equal and it's really important to make the most informed decision for you. Remember, real estate consulting is not really about showing houses. Anybody can drive a car and open a door, but it is way more important to have a good read of the situation and help guide you through the process. Thank you so much for watching and I'm going to see you on the next one. Bye! comes great commutability. Where's Uncle Ben? Ah! We're going to put a list of... Uh, we're going to put a list of... We're going to put a list of... Ah! I think we're going to put this here or here. We're going to put it somewhere. Ah! I know. Shocking.